And uh, the Lord just began to deal something and drop something and deposit something into my spirit for this morning that I think is important. How many of you know that probably in the day in which we live, maybe one of the, the things that is most detrimental to us is that the people are living by their feelings. People live by what they feel. I feel like doing this. Well, I feel like doing I just don't feel right about that. The only thing about feelings is feelings can get you in trouble. Feelings are not real deep. You know what I mean? You can feel like doing stuff that just is not good for you. And so in a time where, where, where it seems like people just, if it, you know, you've heard it said many times over, people just live like this. If it feels good, then just do it. Right? But, but that's not how we live as people of God. The, the word of the Lord tells us in four different places that the just live by faith, not by feelings. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, today we're going to talk about, I want, for just a few moments, you can throw it up here on the screen, we're going to talk about faith without feelings. Faith without feelings, because this is really what the Bible teaches. Feelings don't have anything to do with your faith. Nothing to do with your faith. So I'm going to talk about faith without feelings. Here's how important faith is. And if you want to get, get home, if you got a Strong's Concordance, you could probably, you can test me on this when you get home. It might take you a minute, but you can do it if, you're, if you love to study God's Word. But if you study the Word of, uh, of the Lord, you'll find out that the word faith itself, faith, not j- just faith within itself, not faithfulness and that kind of thing, but just the word faith, is used 246 different times in Scripture. Faith, your faith, the faith that, that we need to live our life is referred to 246 different times. That's how important faith is. The, the Bible says that just live by faith, by faith, by grace, the, the Scripture says, through faith are we saved. As a matter of fact, it's so important that Hebrews eleven six 6 would say, without faith, somebody say without faith, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's how important faith is. As a matter of fact, when you look, when you look at the Gospels, Jesus said three different times in three different instances of him doing a supernatural miracle, he says to these people, your faith has made you whole. Your faith, Matthew 9, with the woman with an issue of blood who had had this, this issue of blood, an uncontrollable blood flow, been to every doctor that she could go to to try to get healed, and she didn't get healed, but she goes to where Jesus is, and she says, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And when she touches the Lord, the Lord turns to her and says, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. And then again, in, in, in Mark chapter 10, Jesus heals a blind man in Mark chapter 10, and again he states, Your faith has made you whole. And then in Luke chapter 17 with the ten leopards, he makes this same statement again. Your faith hath made you whole. Touch somebody next to you and say, your faith is important. Not your feelings. Your faith, but not your feelings. You can be led astray by your feelings. Now let me show you something real quickly here in practical. I'm going to show you three verses of Scripture you're very, very familiar with, but I want to, I want to share with you what the Lord dropped in my spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, a short verse of Scripture says this, We walk by faith and not by what? We walk by faith and not by by sight. Now this is what I want this is what I heard the Holy Spirit say. That 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 disconnects our faith from our senses. It disconnects our faith from our senses. Cuz it says we walk by faith and not by by sight. So if now watch this. So if our faith works independent of the senses. If my faith and your faith works independent of our senses, then just because it feels good 
doesn't mean it's right. If our faith works independent, and that's what 2 Corinthians 5 does, it disconnects our faith from our senses. So if our faith works independent of our senses, then if it feels good, you know, that doesn't make it right. It's like this. It's like scratching a sore. Hello, somebody. It feels good, but the doctor will tell you it will cause it to get infected. That means it's not really good as it feels. That's why it's so important as children of God that we learn to live our lives not by feeling, but by, by faith. It's important, especially right now, because I'm going to tell you your senses, what you see, what you hear in society right now can be detrimental to your faith. Because we constantly see negative things. We constantly hear negative things. That's why we're going to have to disconnect our feelings from our faith and say, you know what? I don't care what I'm hearing. I don't care what I'm seeing. All I know is what I know, and God is faithful. Somebody give him praise because you stand on the Word of God 246 times. The scripture talks about your faith because faith is so important in your life. Now watch this. Another very familiar verse of scripture. Matter of fact, probably the most popular faith verse in all the Bible is from the faith chapter. Somebody say chapter. It's not a faith verse. It's a faith chapter. A lot of times we read verse 1, but there's a whole lot of other verses there that are so popular important in what the Bible calls a life of faith. In Hebrews 11, 1, the scripture says, now faith is. Somebody say, now faith is. Now this, now, okay, now what does that mean? Now faith is. Okay, so it's about to tell you what faith is. But I love to study the word, don't you? And, and you got to study it word by word, line upon line, as they say, precept upon precept. Now faith is the substance. Of course, you know what that word substance there from the original Greek, it literally means a title deed of things hoped for. The evidence. Somebody say evidence. Evidence. Proof. You can insert that word in your Bible, proof. Faith is the what? It's the proof. But now you got to watch what here. Faith is the proof of things not. There we go. There's the disconnect again of our senses and our faith. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for or the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, so what we, what, so what we see here is faith works totally independent of your senses. Because look at it. Faith is the substance of things, so it's the proof of things without even, I don't have to see it. You get that? It's a disconnect. Faith is the proof without seeing it. The evidence of things hoped for, it's the, uh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Why is this? Because God doesn't want you to rely on your senses. He wants you to rely on your faith. Because he doesn't want you to put your trust in what you see or what you feel or what you hear. He wants you to put your trust in him. And if you put your trust in him, it doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what you hear. It doesn't matter what you feel because your faith is what makes it important. Come on, somebody that is living a life of faith that says, hey, I don't care what my eyes see. I don't care what my ears hear. I know what thus saith the word of the living God. And God has always been faithful to me. So I'm going to trust my. Touch somebody next to you. I'm going to trust my faith. I'm going to trust my faith. I'm going to live my life by, by what? By faith. Faith proves it without you having to see it. 
So what does that mean? Everybody do this. What is going to have to happen in these last days is we're really going to have to live a lot of life like this. And if I live my life like this, you know, I, I've shared with you many times my, my, my grandfather, my dad's, my, I mean, my mother's dad, my mother's dad was completely blind. And if, you, if he went somewhere with you, he was totally dependent on you to get him where he was going. Hello? So if I walked him into a store, he was dependent on me to get him through the door and down the aisles. He didn't know where he was going. I was leading him. I'll tell you a funny little story right in the middle of this. Just remember where I was. I'll tell you this. My, him and my father, my, him and my father had a great time together. They just, my, my dad just, they enjoyed each other. They, my, my dad enjoyed my mother's dad. And they just, they just laughed a lot together. And they would get in some heated conversations sometimes too. You know how that goes. But they enjoyed being around each other. My dad would have a lot of fun just, just you know, my dad could be cantankerous at times. And so he'd have some fun with my grandfather. And one, one day he had a little fun because my grandfather would get a little, he was very independent. Although he was blind, he was independent. He liked to do things a lot on his own. And so one day he was agitated with my father. And so he just walked on out of the store without him. And so he's going on and he's feeling his way around and he finds this car. The car is sitting right there at the curb and he finds a car and he thinks it's their car. But it's not their car. And so my dad, being cantankerous like he was, just watched him. And so he just filled around on the car and he finally found his way to the, to the handle on the door. And he, and he opens the door up and he gets in and sits down and closes the door on the car. Well, this is back in the day, you know, he, he, he had to roll, you know, had to roll the windows down. So my grandfather, he reached over there and he was trying to find, my dad knocked on the window. And so he's trying to find the door, the, the window to roll, you know, the knob to roll the window down. And so finally he finds it and he rolls the window down. And my dad said, hey, Cecil. He said, yeah, Bo, what, what? Come on now, we got to go. I'm ready to go home. He said, yeah, but Cecil, we got a problem. He said, what is it? He said, what are you doing sitting in these people's car?" And, of course, my grandfather was just agitated. He was mad. But, you see, the whole point of this is, is that he, 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 he shouldn't have got as angry with my father as he did because he depended on my dad to get back in that car. Come on, somebody. You see, this is how we're going to have to live our life in these last days. We walk by faith and not by so we're going to be having to close off our senses and shut off our senses and disconnect our senses in these last days in order to make it. We are going to have to live our life by faith saying, hey, God, we trust you. You got us this far. You're going to take us home. The Bible said he is the author and he is what the finisher of our faith. The same God that saved you is the same one that's going to take you on. Somebody give God praise because you trust God. You have faith in God. Total, a total disconnect of our senses from our faith. Pray, faith, excuse me, proves it without having to see it. Now, when we talk about Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 is, as, as we have already said and as you well know, is the faith chapter. And there's a reason why. Hebrews 11 is called the faith chapter. And if you did kind of just, just briefly kind of went through Hebrews 11 just, just, just quickly and you started to look at it and, and that you would notice that, that throughout the chapter it continues to say over and over and over and over and over again by faith. Now notice what it said, by what? Not by feelings. And when you see the assignments and you understand the assignments that each of these folks have been given, then, and, then you understand why it's so important that they disconnect their feelings from their faith. 
Because if you allow your feelings, you, you know, sometimes God's going to give you an assignment that your feelings will definitely get you in trouble because you're not going to feel like doing what God wants you to do. Amen. I mean, sometimes your assignment is going to be so large and it's going to be so big that you're not going to feel like for doing it. And sometimes it's going to mean you walking out a season of your life that don't make sense. Anybody been there? You're going to walk out. So, so when you begin to look at when you begin to look at Hebrews 11, it says, verse 4 says, by faith Abel. Verse 5 says, by faith Enoch. Verse 8 says, by faith Abraham. Verse 11 says, through faith Sarah. Verse 20 says, by faith Isaac. Verse 21 says, by faith Jacob. Verse 22 says, by faith Joseph. Verse 23 says, by faith Moses. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, these people carried out their assignments. But think about some of the assignments of the people that I just read. Think about some of the seasons of their life. It would seem crazy, absolutely, positively insane for God to speak to two people in this room today, one of you 90 and the other one 100, and say, hey, you're not going, don't, you're not going to be looking for a grandbaby. You're going to have a baby. Somebody say that is insane. It's crazy. You know what you have to do at that moment? You positively have to disconnect your feelings from your faith. Because I'm going to go ahead and tell you, at 100, I, let, me, let me go ahead and tell you what I'm talking about. I've spent the last few days, I went to Waycross and preached Friday night, and we spent the night with my wife's twin sister, and my wife's twin sister has a grandbaby, and his name is Noah, and he is, I mean, absolutely positively precious, but he is also absolutely positively a live wire. You hear me? He is two years old, and he is full of energy from the time he wakes up until the time he lays down, and I'm like, hoo, 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 hoo. You know what I mean? And I'm only 55. I couldn't imagine if I was 100. And he belongs to somebody else. And now God's going to tell me he's about to give me one. <laughs> and then I've been asking for him for all these years. And then God sees, this is what I'm telling you. That's why you got to trust God. Because I asked for this boy all those years ago, God. But now you're going to wait till I'm 100? It's a total disconnect of your feelings and your faith because God's got a plan. Because the plan is what? The plan is who? The plan is Isaac. And, Isaac's got, and God's got a plan for Isaac. But before there can be an Isaac, Sarah and Abraham got to get together. At a season of their life, when they don't feel like getting together. Let's be real about it. They had to override their feelings. Because now at 100, you just want to rock on the front porch and thank God, literally, that you just breathed another breath. <laughs> I'm still here. Oh, glory. Come on now. <laughs> but it's a life of faith. Or maybe Moses. Remember it said, by faith, Moses? Think about Moses. God comes to Moses and says, hey, Moses, I'm going to make you a leader of, of multiplied millions. You're going to be their leader. You're going to tell them. You're going to give them their plans. You're going to tell them. Moses, oh, hold on, hold on. Not me, man. I can't talk. I have a speech impediment. I stutter. He can, but God said, hey, you know what? Here's the thing. It ain't about you. I'm going to be with you. It doesn't matter what, you know, whether you can talk or you can't talk. It's not about how you, I just don't feel like I can do it. I didn't, I didn't ask you, if you what you felt like, Moses. I told you you were going to lead these folks. Just do what I tell you to do. I didn't ask you what you feel like doing. 
You know what I mean? Joseph, God, God used Joseph. The Bible said, by faith, Joseph. Look at Joseph. Jo- you, think, you think Joseph felt good? You think he felt good while he was in the pit? You think he felt like going to prison? You think he had good feelings? Well, no, but still in the pit and still in the prison, he still trusted God because we're not living by our feelings. We are living by our faith. I'm telling you, God is raising up a group of people, a remnant people in this church that says, I don't care what I see. I don't care what I hear. I know what I know. Thus saith the word of the living God. I want some faith folks in this room to give God praise because you know God is guiding you and leading you and helping you through this season of your life. (laughs) Faith. By faith. Come on, touch seven people. Say, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith. See, you can't go by your feelings. Because uh, how many times do you not feel like praying? But the Bible says pray without. So that means you're going to have to pray when you don't feel like praying. If you're going to pray without ceasing. Boy, that's good preaching. It's practical, but it's good. You're going to, you know, you're going to have times that you're going to be at home. and it, it happened. Matter of fact, it happened this morning. And by faith, you overrode it. For some of you, I just don't feel like going to church today. I think I'll just sit home and watch it online. (laughs) I don't feel like it. But yet the word of God says forsake not. The assembling of yourself together. You see what I'm saying? You've got to disconnect what you feel from your faith. And and, 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 and this is going to bring it to right here. This is going to bring it to right here. The only sense that you have that is, that is connected to your faith at all is your, is your hearing. But it's limited. See, I, I'm not contradicting myself. I just need you to hear what the word of the Lord says. The only sense you have that's, that's connected to your faith is your hearing, but it limits it. You know the verse, Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing. Now, I'm, if, if you're reading in your Bible, the King James Version says faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the word of God. That's what your King James will say. <clears throat> I, I, I chose to use it from this translation because I want you to, I want you to, because this just lays it out for us. So faith comes from hearing. This is New Living. It says, so faith comes from hearing. That is, see it? So faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. In other words, faith comes by hearing. That is the word of God. Now, not that is CNN. That is the word of God. That is negative, not negative Nancy, but that is the word of God. So you see, that is, is important. You need to underline, maybe get you a, 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 a NLT and, and uh, you can get it right off your phone and, and paste it and copy it and put it somewhere and highlight it. That is. You just need to remember it. That it comes from hearing. That is the word of God. Not other things, but God's word. Faith is built when we read God's word because God's word is full of By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. I mean, think about it, y'all. By faith, the Bible said, by faith, Noah. Think about, now think about Noah's feelings. Especially when we all live in a day, you know, (laughs) this, this should be something for us all to relate to. In a day when we're so consumed by what other people think. Oh no, we're not. I'm not. I'm really not concerned about what people think. Okay, well let me let me after service today, I'm gonna go check out your social media, and I'm gonna see if you ain't concerned about what people think, because I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. I, I promise you, most of you, I'm gonna go on your social media. I'm gonna see the highlights, the reels of your life this past week. I ain't gonna see the real stuff that went on in your life. I'm only gonna see the time when you went to the lake, and you were on the boat. And your hair was blowing in the wind. Come on, somebody. 
Those are the things I'm going to see. Because we're concerned about what people think. We want people to think, you know, we want people to think that, man, we got it going on. Huh? We're concerned about what people think. But think about if you were Noah. The Bible said by faith, Noah. Couldn't have been by feelings because if he was going by feelings, he would give up long before. Because here God tells Noah, Noah, I want you to build this big old boat. Now, Noah's boat was a boat. Somebody say, it was a boat. It was a boat's boat. I mean, this was a boat that was supposed to house two of every animal, every kind of animal. Man, what kind of, <laughs> it, had to be, it had to be some kind of boat. But, and, and so, but, but here's the crazy part about it is, it's not the boat. The boat, I mean, it's crazy enough just thinking about what kind of boat he's got to build. But what's crazy at the time is why is the reason he's building the boat. And, and this is what God will do for you. How many of you know that God will leave you hanging for a season? Oh, I feel like preaching right now. He'll leave you hanging. The Lord left Noah hanging for a season. That's why he would put in your Bible in Galatians chapter 6, I think verse 9, when it says... Don't grow weary in well-doing, in doing what you know to do. For in due season, you will reap if you don't what? If you don't quit. So for a season, Noah has to walk out. God has to test Noah's faith. Some folks' faith get tested. Like, you know, you know we, we live in the microwave age now. We feel like God has tested our faith over six days. Well, I've been faithful for six days. I have been, you know... <laughs> I prayed three times a day for six days. God's going, woo, man. Hello, but that's how we are. I've been praying for a week. Pastor, I ain't heard a thing from God. Well, why don't you just look at Noah for a minute? God tells Noah, you're going to build this boat. And the reason you're going to build this boat is because Noah, it's going to rain. And it's going to rain so heavy and so hard. And there's going to be so much rain that the, that the water from the rain is going to, to, to reach the highest peak. Uh, and it'll go over the highest peak that on the face of the earth. Now, the, here's, here's, what, here's what's even worse than that. Is that at that particular time, there was no such thing as rain. Never been any rain. So at that time, moisture rose from within the earth. So there had never been water that came. So here this dude is going, hey, y'all, water's going to start falling out of the sky. So heavy and so hard, it's going to reach the highest mountain peak, drown everything around it. And everybody and all these folks are going, mm-hmm. I thought Moses didn't drink. <laughs> thought y'all told me Moses didn't drink. Amen. And, but here's the crazy part of it. Oh, it gets crazier. God will leave Moses hanging for 120 years. Moses has got to hear people ridicule him, criticize him, talk bad about him. We come on and wrote, Pastor, I don't know. I tell you, it's just so tough serving God. I have to be around all those ungodly people. I've been on this job for five years, and all I hear for five years is Noah's going. Five years, really? How about a lifetime? 120 years, Noah's preaching the same sermon to the same. I mean, folks that were, think about it. 120 years, people are born, grow old, and the man's still walking around. It's going to rain. We ain't seen it yet, but it's going to rain. The Lord left him hanging. Sometimes you walk through seasons of your life where the Lord will leave you hanging. But I can tell you this, the greater the assignment, the greater the period of test. If God has, a, has left you hanging for a longer distance or a longer season or a longer span of time, that means 
that the assignment that God has for you is greater than anything that you could ever imagine. So what you need to start doing is close your eyes and walk by faith and lift your hands and praise God anyway. Even if you haven't seen anything happen, you know God is God and he always will be God. I wish I could find 50 people in the 9 o'clock service that understand God is a faithful God. And he will do. He will do. Pull on somebody on your left and on your right and say, hang on. Hang on. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Tell somebody, God's going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. It's coming. Just hold on. Well, Pastor, what do I do? Hang on. Tie a knot in the end of the rope. Hang on. What's what's the answer to it? I've I've been doing it for a while. What am I going to need to do? Hang on. By faith. By faith. I trust God by faith because it's coming. God's going to do it. In the meantime, you can't let your feelings get in the way. I want to close this sermon today. Oh, they messed y'all up. They just messed you up in the sound booth. They restarted my clock. I've only been preaching one minute and 56 seconds. Y'all are in trouble now. Turn in your Bibles. (laughs) I saw somebody grab their purse, honey, come, we out of here. (laughs) Amen. I want to close the sermon like this. I want to close the sermon telling you that your feelings are deceptive. I, I, I hear people say in this day and time, even church folks will say, well, it just feels good when I hang out with this group. They make me laugh. I have so much fun. But yet there's one problem with it. The Bible says to not unequally yoke yourself together with unbelievers. Your community will define you. I don't see nobody writing. You should have wrote something right then. Your community defines you. Who you hang out with. Huh? You've heard me say it. Cruffalo Dollar said association breeds assimilation. The old country boy used to say, if you get hang out with a skunk, she'll get sneak on you. Y'all understand one of those, don't you? Community defines you, who you hang out with, but yet it feels good, man. (laughs) Oh, that fourth or fifth (laughs) glass of wine, it feels good. Oh, don't look at nobody right now. Look at me. That fourth or fifth glass of wine feels good. But yet the Bible says, be not drunk with wine. Where's an excess? But to be filled with the Spirit of God. It's, it's the, you, see how your, you see how your faith, your feelings have to be disconnected from your faith? If we're going to make it in these last days, if we're going to make it through this season that we're walking through, it's going to be a season of walking with our eyes closed, our senses disconnected from our faith so that we finish the course. That we said, you know, the Apostle Paul, prison couldn't have felt good. It couldn't have felt good to get whipped and beat and chained up and locked up all the time. Couldn't have been felt good. 
But yet his final words written to his spiritual son, Timothy, are these words when he says, Timothy, I fought a good fight. I hung on to my feelings. No, he said, I kept the faith. Henceforth, <laughs> there's a crown of righteousness that's been laid up before me. Because I did what? Because I kept the faith. He didn't base his life on what he felt because there was a lot of positions he was in that didn't feel good. Some of you are walking through a season right now that does not feel good. So, Pastor, what I do, I've been talking to you about it for the last few minutes. For the last five minutes and 46 seconds, I've been talking to you about it. It's what that clock says anyway. Amen. Faith. Not feelings. Today, somebody's faith is going to introduce them to the next season of their life. Somebody's faith is going to introduce you to the miracle you've been needing. Remember what we remember what we opened the sermon with today? The woman with an issue of blood. Jesus looked at her and said, Daughter, it was your faith. The ten lepers. It's your faith. The blind man, it was your faith that made you whole. Today, if you're in need of something and you need God to do something supernatural in you, then we're going to release faith for God to do that. Would you stand all over the room?